Hi, so we're on stage four now of our horsehead nebula um, processing and if you remember from the last one we've now to a point where we're going to actually start doing some processing we've got our integrated single image um, so we need to collect that and we do that double click on the screen go into our horsehead nebula folder integration and there's our single frame, single image. As you can see, it's black pretty much. Only the stars will be showing because this is unstretched. So at the moment, we're not actually we've not touched any data. It's just an unstretched image. So we need to get it to a point where we're happy to stretch the data and to move into the next process. So we're going to grab our screen transfer function tool process, all processes, screen transfer function and remember you can also collect these tools by going um, process explorer, screen transfer function, double click. Um, these sidebar tools, when you, um, you've only got a hover over the icon and the tools toolbar will pop out um, now to get it back in again, just take your take your arrow or your mouse cursor away from the screen, and it will, and it will just automatically go back in. If you want to read the instructions, you need to pin this to the screen, and you do that by clicking on the little square. So now it's locked onto the screen, so you can now read the instructions about the STF tool, um, and as I said before, the tools that have got instructions, it will have this little folded over piece of paper icon. Okay, so if we just uncheck that, move away, it will disappear. So we're onto our image. So let's we're going to just we're going to do a simple automatic stretch. So if we just hit the atomic button, it will give us an auto stretch. Now. Obviously, as we, as we had before, it's upside down, so we're going to turn it around. Image, geometry, rotate 180 degrees, and there we are. We can zoom out a bit if we wanted to make it a bit easier to, to see. Okay, so now we want to set our levels that we're happy with. Um, initial levels, this is not nothing final, it's just our initial levels. And looking at that, we can darken the background uh, um, just a little bit, I reckon. And the way we do that at this point is hold down the control key, uh, left click on the atomic key, and it will bring up our auto stretch um, parameters. And we can change those on here. So we're going to drop the background just a couple of hundred click OK and you'll see the background automatically darken. Go back, we want to I'm gonna up the shadows a little bit and now we're getting a bit more contrast. Um, sorry wrong button. We'll go again. I'm just gonna bring that up a little bit more. So we've got a nice contrasting image, maybe just a little bit too dark. Okay, probably not a bad place to start. Remember, we can change this. Um, we may be just, we're going to just drop that down a little bit. Uh, let's have a little look here. Remember, you can do this as many times as you want. Just backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards. That is uh, one of the good things about PixInsight. There is lots and lots of trial and error. Um, so we're going to, I think we'll, we'll go with that, we're happy with that. So now we're going to stretch the data um, to turn it non-linear and actually working on data. So for that we need our histogram transformation tool. So again, process, all processes, histogram transformation, just there. Um, we're going to select this image, so it's HA. 
that we just select the HA, and it gives us our this is the, uh, um, the the histogram for the image. Now, if we click on the link tool, the arrow or the check mark, track view. If we've got more than one image open, so if we've got three or four, which is which is very normal with PixInsight, the track view will make sure that whatever image you're working on is the one that the histogram is looking at. If you've not got that checked, then you can be adjusting the wrong image. Okay, so just leave that checked um, and happy days. Now, to transfer this stretch that we've done with the screen transfer function to the histogram tool, all we do is we take the new instance icon, left click and hold, we drag it onto the toolbar of the histogram transformation tool. It's now dropped that stretch onto the tool. We take the new instance icon and we drop it onto the screen. Okay. Now what we need to do is we need to disable and close the screen transfer function because we're not going to use this tool anymore now. This is only for the initial stretching so we can visualize the image. So that can be gone now. And the way we um, turn it off, icon at the top, it just looks like a TV screen. We just click on that and that disables the screen transfer function tool. And then we close the tool. It's got no place anymore. So now we're working with a um, we're working with our actual data. So we've stretched the image now. And you can tell that because the green bar has gone. Okay? So we're now, whatever we do now, we're changing data. Now we haven't got to worry about saving the image at this point because we know that we've only one stage away, we've already saved it. We've got it as our unstretched in our folder. So if anything goes wrong at this point, we're okay. But it is a good idea after, well, you'll get quicker and quicker, but after sort of 15, 20, half an hour of processing or of messing about, it's a good idea to save just in case something goes wrong. Um, but we're okay at this moment. So what we're going to do now is um, I'm going to explain a few things that are quite handy to know about the actual image screen. Now there's a lot of things we can do here that makes our life very easy. We can copy this. So if we don't want to work on our actual data we can clone this screen simply by dragging the identifier onto the screen and dropping. We now have a clone, exactly the same, and it's a working image. We can change the identifiers. So this makes it nice and neat if you're doing uh, LRGB and you've got masks and all different things open on the screen. Just double click and we can change the identifier. So we can change it to clone one. Um, a common error is if you try and change the identifier and you put a space, it will reject it. It won't let you. Uh, and some and some symbols and things it won't allow either. If you want to put clone one and you want to space it, you just need to underscore it. So we can do an underscore and it'll accept it. So clone one. Now we can clone it again. You can have another one or we can clone the clone. Um, there's lots of different things. So if you're doing um, three or four, you want to try three or four different ways of processing the same image, simple way of doing it, just clone the image. Or a lot of people want to work on a clone rather than working on the actual image. So same again, you just, you can clone and then iconize your original image and put it in the corner and leave it. So then you know that you're, you've always got a fallback of your original data in the corner. Um, and then another very handy um, thing that we use a lot, uh, we use it very, uh, an awful lot actually, are previews. Some of the 
processes in Pixar Insight, and not only Pixar Insight, any program, are very labor intensive, time intensive, and processor intensive. So we have a handy little function, a preview. Now, the preview is this little icon here. So all we do is click on that icon, and then you see that an icon's been attached to your crosshairs. We can drag that around any area as many times as we want. We can do previews of previews, and they just pop up on the screen. So if we want to work with preview one, we just click on preview one, and there's our preview one. Preview two, there's our preview two. So lots of lots and lots of uses for previews. And then to delete previews, all we have to do is you go preview, and you can delete all the previews. Lots of tools use previews, um, which we'll go into when we start doing a color image. Obviously, I, I deliberately picked a HA image because it's probably the simplest process. Uh, it's a very quick process. This image, once you've got used to a few of the tools, which we don't use many tools on this image, um, it's probably half an hour and you've got an image. So, for now, I'm going to introduce you to a couple of tools that we will use with a HA. Um, so, the histogram transformation tool is one. So if we want to, uh, if we want to change the, the tones of the image, this gram has got a live view. This round hollow icon is a live view of the, what you're changing. So here we are. We just reset the tool. So that's a copy of this. So whatever we do on here, we're not doing on here until we've transferred it. So if we want to, um, we want to darken it, darken the background a little bit. We can, we can just darken the and if you see the image darkening, we can do that. Okay, we can change the mid tones, so we can drag more a lot more detail out, or oh, the shadows, I mean, and then the mid tones. So it's, it's a nice, easy, quick tool of, of changing your stretch data. So if we see there, uh, we've actually lightened it up quite a lot. And I'll show you how to transfer that to a tool. All you do, just delete that. Take your new instance icon. Drop it on the screen. Voila. We now have our um, overstretched image. If you don't like the look of it, we can just go undo, undo, redo, and you can see whether it's better or worse. Okay, we're going to leave it undone for a minute. We're not going to use it for a minute. Um, so, what we are going to do at this point, we're going to use a very neat little tool called HDRMT. But what we're going to do first is we need to um, make a simple star mask because we don't want to destroy the stars. We've got very nice round stars with no halos and no edges, no artifacts. So we're going to generate a very quick star mask. Now, again, there's two ways of doing this. We can just clone the image and use that as a star mask. And the way we would do that is just clone the image. Double click on the identifier, call it a mask, so we know which one it is. With our histogram transformation tool, click on the live, make sure that one's active. Uh, if we click on the track view, it will be. Real-time preview, so we've now got a real-time preview. Remember with the stretch, this is not, remember we stretched this image and I, and I deleted it. So this is, if we transfer that, to that now we would have this representation. If I reset the tool, there we go. So now we're exactly the same. Um, so what we want is our stars, we want to darken the background quite savagely and we can protect the nebula. So if we want to work on the background here, we can protect the nebula Quite nicely, 
very simply, this is a this is a real real simple mask. Uh, we delete that. We transfer our data onto our mask. As you can see, it's just swapped what we had, and then we apply the mask to our image. And we just drag the mask icon, drop it underneath the HA on the toolbar. And then we don't close this image, we just minimize. If you close it, it will, it will delete the mask. Now, red protects. So on this screen at the moment, all of this red is being protected. So any changes we make will only happen to the nebula. If we invert the mask, and we do that by going mask, invert, we're now working on just the background and the nebula is protected. So red protects. And then if we want to hide the mask, again, it's just mask and we show mask. And that deletes it. It doesn't delete it, it just hides it. We know there's a mask active because the HA icon is brown. When that's brown, there's a mask active. So we can mask, show mask, mask, invert mask. Okay? And then if you want to remove the mask, we just remove mask. So now it's gone back to black, no mask. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to produce just a star mask for this image. We want to work on the background and we also want to work on the um, on the nebula as well. So what we're going to do, we're just going to go um, process, all processes. This is not one I use very often this tool. Star mask. And we're just going to leave all the all of the settings at default and then apply and that will produce us a star mask for our image uh, and it takes a little while but it won't be long so we apply our mask protect the stars and then we can start to manipulate the data so there we are so we just shrink that and there's our star mask which is actually quite a good star mask. And same again, we can see that this all going to marry up. If we just take the star mask icon, drop it on the toolbar, minimize, take that out of our way, and then mask. Now you can see the mask has not come up, so we need to select the mask. And the way you do that is just click on the screen, and now they're all active. So we want to invert the mask. So we're just protecting the stars. And more and more importantly, on this image, it wouldn't work on all images, but it will on this one. We are protecting more of the halo of the stars because they're quite nice. Uh, they, they look quite good. So I'm quite, we're happy with that. So we, all we're doing now is protect all of the stars so we can work on the rest. And then we go mask show mask and that takes it off our screen it's still there because the HA icon is brown now um, what we're going to do now is what we do now at this point um, I'm going to save this video and we're going to move on with the next video but I don't want these to get too long so we'll just come back exactly the same screen but at least it gives you a break in the, in the video tutorial, okay? So I will be back very soon.